For more analysis on the crisis in Ukraine, let's bring in my colleague Nathan King, who's been keeping tab on all the developments. Nathan, so what do you make of all the stuff that we've seen lately with the agreement in Geneva? Yeah, as, here, as uh, Rowie indicated, there is a slight de-escalation in tensions in eastern Ukraine as the Easter holiday takes hold, but it is far from the truce pictured in Geneva just a few days ago. The fundamental differences on the ground in Ukraine remain even following the Geneva Agreement. The pro-Russian groups on the ground interpret the Geneva Agreement differently from that of the interim government in Kiev. Pro-Russian leaders in the east say the ultra-nationalist groups that continue to occupy buildings in the Ukrainian capital of Kiev should vacate those first. One right-wing group, the right sector, has held on to buildings since Viktor Yanukovych was ousted on February 22nd. And Russia, too, has called for this to happen. Complicating matters, of course, is that the pro-Russian groups in eastern Ukraine also do not recognize the interim government in Kiev and are asking those leaders to resign before stepping back from the barricades. The pro-Russian militias maintain that Kiev is suppressing the rights continually of the Russian-speaking minority in Ukraine. Russian officials, meanwhile, and this is interesting, are verbally taking a hands-off approach this weekend uh, over the crisis and saying everything should be solved internally by Ukrainians themselves. Uh, and a mediator from Europe's uh, OSCE security body headed to eastern Ukraine on Saturday to pursue a surrender of pro-Russian supporters in Kiev. Russian foreign ministry officials say they're, there, they're prepared to offer help, but as yet that's unspecified. Moscow, however, and this is really interesting, is now confirming that military units have been deployed to the Ukrainian border in response to the instability inside the country. Moscow says Russian troops have the sovereign right to move anywhere within Russian territory. Uh, and as mentioned, US Vice President Joe Biden visits Ukraine this coming week. Biden's trip comes as we also expect an official announcement from the Pentagon on the deployment of extra troops to NATO allies Poland and Estonia. Warsaw had asked for thousands of troops, but we understand that's going to be in the low uh, hundreds as well. Uh, and they'll be conducting uh, joint exercises far away from eastern Ukraine, of course, in the north uh, near the Baltic states as well. So, Nathan, you know, there has been so much finger pointing and the blame game. It's, it's been going on for quite a while now. So what is the end game here for Russia and the West? Well, for Russia, uh, and this is what they're saying outwardly, of course, both Russia and the West, is a greater autonomy for Russian-speaking enclaves. They were very worried at the way Viktor Yanukovych was kind of ousted from power and that this new pro-Western interim government, non-elected, was kind of calling the shots. So as they negotiate the future uh, of Ukraine, they want these regions to be more autonomous. And let's face it, this is the east of the country uh, where a lot of the economy uh, is based as well. For the West, now it's back to the drawing board of, of when Viktor Yanukovych was ousted. They want Crimea back in uh, the Ukraine, the 1991 independence borders, uh, but they also want guarantees uh, that Russia won't meddle again. Now, it's unlikely that Crimea will go back to Ukraine, so there's a lot of hard bargaining ahead. But the key date is May 25th. That's when elections are meant to be held uh, across Ukraine, and we'll wait and see if that actually happens uh, and the maneuverings ahead of that as well. All right. Thank you so much, Thank Nathan. You.